Okay, so I spent a couple of days doing something I rarely do, and that is watching other true crime creators on live stream. And what I found should be a felony. Why? Why did I do it? Well, hello, my silky friends. Yes, I'm having a moment. Okay, I never do this. By the way, you're looking good. Like what you've done with your hair. Okay, so y'all know I am not about the drama. So, you know, what motivated me? Well, I kept hearing certain things about certain creators. And I'm like, you know what? I don't even know what's going on. Let me watch. What a mistake that was. You know, but I was motivated to see what all the fuss was about. But as I was scrolling through many different creators, this is what I found. Now, as you know, I have covered tons of true crime, and I honestly, truly do not watch other people because I don't have the time. Guess what? When you're working, you don't have the time to watch others. Most of the true crime content was literally just people reviewing other people's content and making fun of them. Yeah. I mean, how is this true crime? It's just regurgitating garbage. What are you actually creating out here besides a culture of hate? And yet, as I'm watching, I am seeing, like, they've got tons of su subscribers. They're much, much bigger than my channel. And people are just throwing money left and right. I mean, cha-ching, cha-ching. Interestingly, though, I also saw a lot of people who have been on my live chats before in with this drama people i really didn't expect i'm like holy moses and of course you have the same kind of content creators in the chats it's just like they've got this whole group of let's hate on people let me tell you something it was a real eye opener for me the only true crime here is their character or the lack of it now, I could say a whole lot about these creators and break it down, but I'm not going to because y'all know that's not my style. I am literally not interested in what they do or what they say about me either. But the wheels that started turning in my head were, what is the motivation behind this? Why do we love the drama on social media? So, of course, I started researching and I came up with this article. And I found this article from Stylist Magazine that talks about why we love other people's Facebook drama. She says it's just too thrilling to ever consider leaving and that I'm fascinated by social media influencers' beef and picking up on whether one is shading the other with little snipes and pointed comments. It's a guilty pleasure. Look, I can find a lot to be guilty for. Maybe what I ate yesterday or whatever. I don't need any more guilt, okay? My mama gave me enough. Sorry, mama. So that really didn't give me the answers I wanted. So, of course, I went to the all-knowing chat, GPT, and I asked this question. Why do some people feel empathy for others' failures while some find it humorous? Yes, I said humorous because these people were literally laughing and making fun of other creators' troubles and failures or whatever. I mean, why are some things socially acceptable and others are not? Let me give you an example. Let's say your 90-year-old great-grandmother with dementia passed away. You come into the room and people, you're like, yeah, my grandma, you know, she was a little bit crazy, but she unexpectedly passed away last night. Now, what if the people in the room were like, oh my God, oh, it's about time we were taking bets on when she was going to go. You would be horrified, right? Because it's a tragedy, no matter what the circumstances. But yet, it's socially acceptable to look at other people's problems and laugh at them. Why? What is the difference here? Let's talk entertainment. Drama provides a sense of excitement and intrigue, much like a soap opera or reality show. Captures attention, and it keeps people engaged. Now, I'm just going to say, again, if you need this kind of excitement in your life, get a hobby. Start a YouTube channel. Do something constructive, because you will never have time again. I remember the good old days. Now, the next reason is connection. Social media creates a sense of community, 
Watching the drama can make people feel connected to others who share their opinions, whether they're supporting or criticizing the involved parties. So it really makes us look at each other like, oh, yeah, we're one big happy, happy family. We're a tribe here. We all hate on this one person. We're connected. Yeah, we're making friends. Okay, that sounds good and all, but what happens the day that they decide to turn their radar around on you? Because mark my words, it will happen. Now we have good old curiosity. Human nature is inherently curious. People want to know. The latest gossip, conflicts, they often feel compelled to follow along to see how the situations unfold. Now that is very true. We are curious to know what happened in situations that we come across. Like we know something is going on with a family and maybe it was it's a scandal. But if we don't have the conclusion, we're always asking, hey, what happened? What happened? I haven't heard anything. It's kind of because we as humans need closure. We need to know that the outcome hopefully was good. We want to feel satisfied. And that curiosity of what is going on keeps driving us. So you find out about a thing and you want a resolution. But look, sometimes you just need to stay out of it and mind your dang business. Now you have relatability, and this is a big one, because many of the dramas touch on universal themes like relationships, betrayal, and conflict that resonate with the viewers and make them feel less alone in their own experiences. Now, of all the reasons to watch drama, this is, I think, the one that makes the most sense to me. Let's say we're watching drama about a couple breaking up, creators fighting, you know, getting divorced, cheating on one another, whatever. It somehow helps our feelings if we have been betrayed or we have been victimized in some way. It can feel very relatable to the situation, like we have a common ground, and it kind of helps us move through our journey, right? That's why a lot of women, when they have a bad breakup, they watch TikToks and other things, get on Facebook and talk about how horrible their ex-boyfriend was or their ex-husband, whatever, because you need to vent. You need to feel that sense of community. So this one, I kind of get this. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying, hmm, kind of makes sense. Now, this is the one that really gets my goat. Escape. Engaging with drama can provide a distraction from everyday life. It allows viewers to immerse themselves in someone else's issues, offering a temporary escape from their own problems. Again, sister, get a hobby, all right? Do something constructive. If your life is that dang boring, then go volunteer. Go get involved in an actual cause and do something good for society. When you are busy, you don't have time to worry about the drama in other people's lives and just escape from it and kind of feel good when bad things happen. It makes you feel better about yourself and your own stinking mundane life. So if you don't like your own stinking mundane life, then get a better one. Do something positive. Do good. Doesn't that make more sense? And the last reason is validation, because commenting or sharing opinions about the drama can give some people a sense of empowerment and validation as they express their views and engage in discussions. Okay, so this is a sorry sack of circumstances, because if you need other people's trouble to feel validated in your own life again, you need to do some soul searching, okay? Oh, so you feel better about yourself for five minutes. Oh, that's a great reason. What a nice human you are. I might be a little spicy today. Okay, but then I had to ask myself, is there more than just, you know, escapism, validation, all this kind of stuff? Is there a physiological reason that we are addicted to drama? And lo and behold, this is what I found out. So I went back to the internet to find out if we are chemically addicted to drama. And this is what I discovered. Honey, your body is out of control. And uh, yes, the cat is judging you. You see, there are many chemicals that actually go into and feed these reactions. So even if you mentally want to stop and you think I should be a better per person, your body might be fighting against you. So here is a rundown of the criminal chemicals and what they do. 
Our first little demon is dopamine. It's the feel-good chemical. And so when we watch drama, it makes us feel excited or entertained, especially when we anticipate juicy developments. Then we have cortisol. Yes, it is linked to stress, but it also explains why some people find social drama thrilling, even if it's stressful. Our next bad boy is oxytocin, which is known as the bonding hormone. You see, when we watch drama, it can evoke strong emotional responses and we feel connected or empathetic with the individuals involved. Our next problem is endorphins. Now, these are natural painkillers that promote feelings of happiness. So when we are, you know, watching the drama and laughing, we are releasing endorphins and our body loves it. And our last little demon is adrenaline, because all this drama leads to the excitement of a fight-or-flight response, and it heightens our feelings of suspense and engagement. You know, chasing adrenaline is why some people jump out of planes, not me. So basically what is happening when you are watching this drama and engaged in this drama and watching it day after day and night after night, you are actually taking dopamine hits. It is a chemical high. And this is why some people can't seem to break this cycle, just like other addicts do. You are addicted! Hello, my name is Silky, and I am addicted to dopamine. I also have an adrenaline and oxytocin problem, too. Okay, but you see what I'm saying? It's literally an addiction. So now, maybe you decide all of a sudden, oh, I want to be a better person. I'm not going to get in this drama. Your body might actually fight against that. So. You need to replace those things with other habits, such as walking, spending time in nature, dancing, doing something that is going to release that oxytocin, those endorphins, all those things. Because now you not only have a mental and emotional addiction to drama, you have a physical and chemical one. Yay! Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, social media. You're welcome. You're welcome. You have created a monster. But anyway, the point of this whole thing is, come on, people, let's do better. If you're going to create content, create real content or go get your dopamine somewhere else. Okay. Now, of course, I realize some people aren't going to stop because as long as we are paying them, they're going to keep giving you. They're like your dealer. It's the dopamine, oxytocin, cortisol, adrenaline. That's your dealer, honey. They're doing it every night on live stream and they're just feeding that addiction. So if you don't want to be an addict, then just stop. Stop. Do something else. Find other way ways to increase that level for God's sake. Cut it off at the root. All right, be a be a decent human being. I appreciate you all so much. I hope you cut the drama out of your life and I am so sorry to all of those people who are targets. I mean, come on. We have so much potential in ourselves. There is no, literally no reason for us to be acting like this when we can do some real creation, have a real life, and not a fake society of fake friends who will turn on you in just a minute as soon as you go against whatever they're saying. Watch and see if I'm not right. Okay, appreciate you all. Have a great day. Whatever you do, stay silky. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.